First, download the free automated installation kit ISO from Microsoft. Let's take a look at using some of the built-in Windows imaging tools. And so we're going to download and install the automated installation kit. And again, I prefer using tools like Clonezilla on Pendrive Linux or um, Norton Ghost, but it's just a built-in Windows tool, so you know, such that if you have Windows and it's there and it's for free. And I've already downloaded the tool, but you'll want to go find it. And in this case, it's just an ISO file that you can mount. Second, once downloaded, burn the ISO to a CD or mount and extract it with a tool like Daemon Tools or Power ISO. So I downloaded the ISO and you could use a tool like Power ISO and extract it. Um, or Daemon Tools or Daemon Tools Lite if you have that. Or you can burn it to a disk if you want. Either way. Just, but take the I ISO, in this case I have it in the form of a disk. And you want to launch the program called Start Now which will install the uh, Windows Automated Installation Kit. So I'm going to do Windows AIK Setup. And I'm going to click on Next. And agree with the statement. You can go with the defaults. Everyone. Next. Next. and installation is complete and notice when we do that it adds the system image manager and deployment tools command prompt and of course documentation things like that but basically the, the tool we'll be using is the windows system image manager third copy the source folder from your windows 7 dvd to your hard drive Next, you're going to need uh, the source folder from a Windows 7 DVD, 3264. In this case, I'm doing the 32-bit version of uh, Windows 7 Ultimate. And if you use a, a, you know, a DVD, remember it's read-only, and you'll have permission problems if you try to build this image just using the DVD. So what you've got to do is you need to copy the sources folder to your hard drive where it's writable where you can modify the permission and give it write or full permission and then you'll be all set so I'm gonna do that I'm just gonna go here onto my Windows 7 DVD and what I need is the sources folder and if you want to take a look at it it's about 2.25 gigabytes so two and a quarter gigabytes and so we'd need at least that much free space I'm going to copy in here. I don't have a lot of free space, but you want at least enough space for the source files and also to build an image file. And so I'm going to go ahead and put that here. And um, I'll put it here in my backup folder where I have other things as well. So we're just going to copy that whole sources folder. Okay, and in this case the folder is copied and what I'm interested in is the .wim files, the Windows image files. Let me throw that in as a filter. And in this case, 
We're not interested in the boot Windows image file, but we want the install Windows image file in the sources folder. It's about 2 gig. Again, remember, this needs to be put copied to your hard drive and made writable. So you couldn't just pull that right off your Windows 7 DVD because it would be read-only. You wouldn't be able to modify permissions on it. And with that set, we're all ready to make images. Fourth, with the AIK installed, launch System Image Manager, or SIM. Now that we have the automated installation kit installed, the part of it that we want to use is, well, there was a shortcut right there, but I'll just show you the whole folder, the Windows System Image Manager. So I'm going to launch that. And remember that, you know, we'll need a folder with our Windows uh, source files and the Windows image. And we've already copied that to our C drive. Okay. Five, create a distribution share. Click Tools, create distribution share. So um, having done that, let's go to Tools and we'll say create distribution share. And in this case, we can create this anywhere we want. We can call it what we want, um, but let's make it in here well, at the root directory level, the C drive, and I'll throw it inside of backup, and I'll just make a folder called share. Alright, so it's C backup share is where we're going to create it. Six, select the Windows system image. Click file, select Windows image. And let's go to File and select Windows Image for a Windows Image file. And here's where we need to go find our source folder. And remember that we copied that to Backup. So I'm going to look in Sources. And I don't want Boot Wim, but I want Install Wim. That's the 2 gigabyte. If I hold, so 2.03 gigabytes. If I hold the mouse over there, you can see the pop up. So I'm going to click on Open. And notice that I can choose. Um, what type of image do I want to create? You know, um, starter, home basic, home premium, professional, or ultimate. In this case, I'm going to choose ultimate. Um, all right. So notice that all of these files now appear here. Um, and in this case, these are the sources. Seven. Create an answer file. Click file. New answer file. And now next, um, I want to let's make an answer file. So I'm going to click on File and New Answer File. All right, and when I do this, pops up for a new answer file. Now we need to configure the answer file. With our distribution share created and our Windows System image file loaded and our new answer file, we need to go in and configure it. So first off, we have to go into our image file that we've loaded and find the right image um, that we want to build our answer file on. And there's 64-bit AMD, and then there's Intel, and there's 32-bit. And in this case, I'm 32-bit, or I want to build a 32-bit image in a 32-bit environment, and it's Intel-based. And so you want to go down and find the setup. So I'm gonna, I just open the node up here, components, I'm just going down and looking for x86, not AMD 64, but x86. And I want to look for Microsoft Windows Setup. Here we go, Neutral. Right here, I'm going to pull this out so you can see it. And then I'll click it so you can highlight it. So, x86 Microsoft Windows Setup, 617600, underscore Neutral. Particularly is the one that I want. And that's under the Windows 7 Ultimate Image under Components. Capiche? So, I'm going to open this node here by just clicking on these little plus symbols, the nodes, and you can drill down. Notice as I do, watch what happens over here in these panes. Right? If I close this, select another image, or another component, look at that. So this is a way of navigating um, you know, different properties and sections of the answer file that you want to configure. And the first thing we want to do here, we, we need to you know, tell the answer file how to partition the system and prepare it for the installation of, of Windows 7. Um, so I'm going to go into uh, disk configuration right here. Right Again, watch how it changes. And I'm going to open up disk configuration. And from disk configuration, I'm going to go to disk. I'm going to open up disk. 
and from disk I'm going to go to create partitions and I'm going to open up create partitions with an S plural and then under that I'm going to go to create partition singular no S and that container there I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say add setting to pass one windows preboot environment or PE All right. and notice how when I did that it was added up here okay and then I want to do the same thing with modify partitions so I'm going to go down here I'm going to click on the plus symbol to open the node for modify partitions with an S, the plural version go down to modify partition, singular, no S and I'm going to right click and I'm going to say add setting to pass one windows preboot environment and again when I do that notice it appears over here in the middle pane under the answer file okay so now I'm going to hop on over to the answer file box and come up here and you know, the pane in the middle of the screen I'm going to select uh, the disk container and when I set the disk container um, notice over here that you know the property sheets come up uh, for any component that I select so you know, I'll just show you what I'm talking about I'll go down a few of these here just to show you All right, so see how that changes in the right pane just kind of a nice graphical tool to help you configure answer files um, alright but in this case uh, I have disk selected and on disk under settings I'm gonna set the disk ID to be zero remember that everything starts with zero uh, in computers and not one and then we'll wipe disk you can either type true and false or you can click on the little drop down box over here and select true or false but in this case yes it's going to be the the first disk the you know, first partition and yes we want to format or wipe the disk we want to clean it just in case there's some old information on there that will mess up the installation or who knows could be viruses or old data or something but yeah we want to format it and clean it and completely wipe out the disk and start from scratch so that's how we're configuring that um, now I'm going to select the create partition node and we can create a, or you know we can modify a few properties for that so in this case as far as being extended we're going to change that to be true and as far as the order we're going to make that one we're going to skip size and let's come down here and the type um, in this case we're going to create a primary partition we make all different sorts but generally unless you're doing a multi-boot you want to configure uh, Windows 7 on a primary partition for the operating system okay um, now the next thing we want to configure is modify partition so I'm going to go over here and select modify partition and when I do that under modify partition um, let's set some of our properties here we'll go to active remember that in order for a partition to be able to boot or in order for Windows uh, you know or any other operating system for that matter to be able to boot off of a partition it needs to be marked as active so we're going to make that true because the partition does need to be active all right now the formatting we're going to set it to NTFS and we'll skip whether well, it's extended but you know NTFS think about it without NTFS um, you, know, you can't have compression or encryption because FAT32 doesn't support that you can't have file sizes over four gigabytes if you're using FAT32 instead of NTFS NTFS you get big large file sizes most importantly though you get the permission systems the discretionary access control list or DACL, DACL and the access control entries or ACES all comes with NTFS so we want to use that now the label could be anything um, Windows, whatever you want to call it I'll call mine banana okay and the letter and typically you know we know by default that usually the root system partition is C could be something else in a multi-boot setup or multiple partitions but usually it's C the order is going to be 1 and the partition ID is going to be 1 you come down here and put 1 right there and we'll leave the type ID blank and there's a nice tool here it's, it's almost like spell check for answer file syntax but if you come up here to tools and see this is validate answer file you can click on that and it will kind of do like you know, the equivalent of spell check or um, if you're not a programmer if, if you're a programmer and you're used to using a compiler basically it just does it's like you know building a project and it will check all the syntax and give you feedback on it if there's any errors or problems it'll show up down here in the description and if not it'll tell us no errors no problems 
So let's run that validate answer file. And we get no warnings or errors. Yay! Next, we will create a configuration set. The next thing we need to do is create a configuration set. Um, and we could do this where we create our distribution share. Be a logical place. So I'm going to click on Create Configuration Set from the Tools menu. And you can go over and browse to it if you want, but um, in this case it was on Computer, C, Backup, and Share. And double click there. I'm going to click on OK. And notice it says configuration set created successfully. I'll click OK. And let me just open up uh, Internet Ex or, excuse me, Windows Explorer here. And let's look at the C partition and in backup and in share. And you can see in this case it's created the files for us. Okay, um, so with the configuration set created, um, let's go ahead and close uh, System Image Manager and we'll save our answer file. So you can save it manually or if you click close it will prompt you to save it. 